Hello friends, Cyberry here, wishing you all a happy Stratter Day. Um, I've got another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide here today. Um, I would like to take some time to thank some of the people who make this possible. All of the subscribers on this channel, of which we are now damn near 100, and I'm super proud of that. Um, so all the subscribers and all of the heroes on Patreon. Uh, specifically today, I want to thank Veritas. I appreciate everybody's support, uh, each and every one, in whatever form it takes. Uh, if you two want to help support the channel, you can visit patreon.com slash mastercyberry, or just subscribe here on the channel and tune in. It's that simple, and it makes a huge difference. Um, let's get past all that. Uh, today, we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Mender. So the Mender... Um, this class was created by a guy named Guy. That is the only credit I know of, and I, I believe this was the first class they created. And uh, overall, I really, really like it. Uh, let's start first by looking at the base stats. Um, the HP starts off at 21 at the first resolve, and it'll go all the way to uh, 37. Um, this is what I consider to be average HP. Um, it's very close to uh, Highwayman, Houndmaster, Grave Robber. It's, it's right around that area. Um, so she's going to have a decent HP pool for a uh, support healer class. Um, dodge, she is above average. She'll have a 10 dodge that becomes a 30 at max level. Speed, she's got a 5 at first resolve, which will progress to a 6 and then a 7 at max. So um, this is above average. This is the same speed value as a Houndmaster. Um, she's going to go first fairly often, uh, but she's not going to be the fastest person on your team unless you trinket her as such. Um, accuracy is normal. This is uh, based on a quirk. Prod is normal. Uh, the critical is starts at a 2%. Uh, it progresses all the way to a 6 at max level. Um, I consider this below average, but only slightly. Um, if she had one more percent crit, I would consider that average. So it's um, it's it's reined in there to that middle number pretty tightly. Uh, Damage-wise, she is a backline damage dealer. She's going to do very comparable damage to, you know, Plague Doctor, uh, even kind of a Vestal. Um, she's got a little more reliability at low level. She does, uh, I believe it's one higher damage than the Plague Doctor would at a similar level at uh, Resolve 1 and 2. So overall, you'll notice all her stats are very much like reined in to that center number. They're very they're very average or average adjacent, which is uh, actually kind of a good thing on a support class. Um, you don't want a glaring weakness, and she still has the potential to do some damage if you need it. Probably the most um, interesting stat on her is this dodge value, actually. Um, a lot of the backline support and healing classes tend to have really low dodge values, uh, but she's one of the few uh, capable healers slash support classes that has a, uh, a higher dodge value to start with. Um, she's got the same dodge as a um, Hellion. Highwayman has the same dodge. Uh, so it's actually kind of nice that she's going to be able to avoid some attacks sometimes. So let's take a look at her kit. Um, combat skills begin with Bandage. It is usable from the 3rd and 4th rank, and you basically target either yourself or an ally, and you heal them at lowest resolve, 3-4 to four HP. Um, this actually tracks pretty well, I believe it... Um, is very comparable to a couple other healers at max level. Uh, it's just a good healing skill. 
The second is Curative Vapors. It is usable from rank 2, 3, and 4, and it heals the party for 1 to 3 HP. Um, at max level, I believe... Yeah, at max level it's 4 or 5 HP. So you're going to get some decent potency out of this. And I want to I wanna state real quick on the record here, this is an older version of the current one that's available. I believe this is version 1.5, and the one on the Steam page is 1.7. If you want to look at one of the old versions, uh, scroll down to the comments on that Steam page. He has um, a couple different variants for you to use if you wish. Uh, I personally prefer this version because it's, um, it's a little more potent healing-wise but it's also uh, nerfed from initial release still. So I think it hit the, the sweet spot right around here. Uh, the third ability, Medicinal Herbs, is usable from either of the back two ranks, and you use it on you, yourself or any ally. Uh, you heal, one HP, you cure Blight and Bleed, and you clear debuff. I don't know another class that can clear debuffs. So this is actually kind of interesting in that respect, but it's also, um, it's a lot like a in-combat wound care, if you think about it like that. So it's actually kind of nice. Um, the fourth ability, Inuring Tincture, is usable in third or fourth rank, and you target yourself or an ally. It will heal stress damage. Uh, starting at 6, I believe at max it goes to uh, 10 stress damage. It clears horror on the target, and it buffs them from minus 10% stress received. And I believe that buff lasts for 3 turns. This is... Think about this like um, it's laudanum given to you by a professional, if that makes sense. So you get this bonus of this stress heal on top of clearing horror and receiving less stress damage. So this is uh, what I like to think of as her, um, her healing kit. And right now we're going to get into what I like to think of as her, her support kit. Um, the first one is Slingshot. It's usable from the third or fourth rank, and it, it, it can target the first, second, or third rank of the opponent opposing ranks. Uh, so ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 65, and a crit mod of plus 5%. And it has a stun rating with 100% base. Um, this is your generic stun attack. Uh, it has similar damage dealt with the stun as a Vestal would do. Um, also similar to an occultist. Um, it will get higher crits, but not by a whole lot, so you'll crit with it somewhat often. This is, um, I mean, I use this a lot. This probably, a lot of people might gravitate more toward the next ability, but I, I use this a ton. Uh, the next ability is Toxic Shot. It is usable from rank 3 or 4, and it is usable to target any enemy rank. Um, this move, I'm not sure if the most current version changed its targeting. Uh, I vaguely remember at one point playing this and not being able to target the back with this ability, but that could be completely outdated. Um, it is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85. It has a damage modifier of negative 30%, a crit mod of 5%, and it blights with the normal 100% base for two points a round for three rounds. Uh, the blight on this is actually pretty considerable. It's not Plague Doctor levels, but you're also doing 70% of damage when you hit with it. So, think about it like that. She's going to do a decent chunk of damage with the initial hit, and then at max level, she's going to be doing four blight damage as well. Um, so you'll find this is uh, the best offensive choice in her kit that I, I think of, at least. 
And her final ability is Diagnose. It is usable from any rank on an enemy in any rank. It is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 100 at outset. A damage modifier of negative 100%. It bypasses stealth and de-stealths the enemy and it marks the target. It will debuff the target for negative 12 dodge with the standard 100% base. Um, so if you need a mark unit to help your arbalist or musketeer or your bounty hunter to deliver straight damage on round one, she's not a bad choice, uh, especially considering that she has above average speed and um, she's not unreliable like the occultist would be as a healer. So she's got some decent utility all across the board. And now as far as how I would arrange what skills I choose on her, um, standardly I'll pick two or three of these from the healing set and one or two to fill the ranks with uh, one of these abilities. So something similar to, if you don't need her as a stress healer, something similar to this or even this can be functional. Um, I typically will have those three and either bandage or sometimes medicinal herb on her. Uh, I, I also find that if you if you have the funds you should unlock all these skills because you may find in the middle of a dungeon that you uh, they really want to use a different one and I'll maybe get into that a bit uh, here in a little bit. So let's go over her camping skills. It looks like she has the generic three. However, this is not wound care, it is medical care. It is a time cost two ability, and you target a companion, and you heal them 30% HP instead of the 15% wound care normally does. You remove bleeding and blight, which is the same. However, the kicker here is you can use this three times per camp. So in theory, if your party is just ravaged, you're out of food after camping is considered, and their HP is a mess, it may be best to use this on everybody who's, you know, beaten to shit, and just get some healing out of it, recover in that regard. Um, this is not an everyday solution, as far as when I camp. But it is, I mean, if you camp for HP heals, or if that dungeon calls for it, it's nice to have. Um, these two are the generic ones, however. So we're going to skip to this camping skill, Checkup. Checkup is a time cost 4 ability, and you remove bleeding and blight from the entire party, and you remove mortality debuffs. Um, this is niche... However, hella useful in those situations where one or two party members hit death's door and you've maybe bounced their health back to where it should be, but it's still nerve-wracking because you're taking that negative for the rest of the dungeon. Uh, this is definitely a good one to keep purchased and unlocked, even if you're not going to select it when you go into a dungeon. Just keep in mind, you're going to have to switch it on before you can Uh, the next ability is Cure. It is a time cost 4, and it just removes disease from everybody in your party. Um, this is like a, uh, a super version of... Wait, what's that Grave Robber ability? Uh, what is it called? The one where she basically smokes with them, and then all of a sudden they have no diseases anymore. Uh, or the Plague Doctors curing disease. It's, it's like a ramped up version of both of those. Uh, it's very useful, but it's also very situational. This one keeps her in the party pretty frequently. Um, if you don't have somebody in your party that is a prevent nighttime ambush unit, she's capable to do that as well. Uh, Doctor's Vigil is time cost 4. It does just that. It prevents nighttime ambush. And it also gives yourself 
a plus 10% virtue chance for the next four battles. So that's, um... It's kind of a unique be benefit to gain, aside from preventing an ambush. Uh, time cost four, there are some in the modded class variety that cost less than that. However, time cost four is very standard, and this is a, a, an interesting ability to to use to that end. Her final camping skill is Soothing Incense. It is also time cost 4. It is a party stress heal. It's, it'll heal 10 stress, and for the next 4 battles they will all take 10% less stress. So, um, camping skills wise, She's got, like, a little bit of everything as far as uh, recovery goes. Um, so, typically I'll outline her skills. I don't know. I'll usually have three of her customs. And then um, I'll usually have the generic encourage or pep talk, depending. But I'll be able to switch on medical care if I think I might need it. Typically I'll run something similar to this. But if I run in the uh, Weald, or the Cove, where I think there's going to be some diseases, or not the Cove, the Warrens, then I'll uh, pop on Cure instead. But she's definitely one of those, um, when you use her, you got to be careful and knowledgeable before you do things. So party composition-wise, here's one of those things to be knowledgeable about. Um... When we went through our combat skills, you'll notice she only has two abilities that work from any of the front ranks. Curative Vapors is usable from rank 2, and Diagnose is usable from rank 2 or 1. Everything else you have to be in the back two ranks to use at all. So keep this in mind when you're building a party with her. Um, if you lose, God forbid, if you lose somebody in those front two ranks and she slides forward into rank 2, uh, all of a sudden, she's not doing anything in that combat, and that becomes a problem. So if you got to have somebody in rank 4, strategic reasons, um, it may benefit you to have a secondary plan with them for that combat. Like, keep, a, keep an ability on them that they can use from the front ranks, just in case. And if something goes wrong, you swap their positions around and that person takes the blow of being in rank 2 instead. And yes, the other part of being careful when using her is definitely being very knowledgeable about what you want to do with camping before you use that firewood so that you can uh, equip her skills as such. So typically, it's not really super important, but... Um, she benefits from having, like, most of her kit unlocked. And, uh, she is one that I frequently find that I'll pause and change her kit around in between combats or right before camping or whatnot. Other than that, let's see. Synergistic notes, uh, in mind. This is an automatic clear horror, which there are a few of, especially in the modded community. Um... So if you're playing with another class that inflicts horror on targets, or even yourself, keep this in mind, because this is guaranteed. So if you're playing with the Philomath and she's using abilities that inflict horror on herself, or she is afflicted and randomly targets someone to inflict horror on, this is incredibly useful. You don't have to take that slow incoming stress damage, you won't have to... Um, use a laudanum or anything in its case. This is incredibly useful to have on a kit in a group like that. Um, quirks to keep in mind. If you're playing with... Uh, oh god, what class did this come from? It slips the mind right now. This comes from a class mod. If I remember it while I'm editing, it's going to be flashing on the screen right now. Um, if you have an Inspired Memoriam, it's actually really good on her, uh, because of the stun move that I use a ton. Other than that, um, Hippocratic is really good on her, uh, 
What do I got on these few? Fairweather Fighter's not bad. Just generally because I have her with a lot of HP as often as I can. Eagle Eye for ranged attacks. Yeah, yeah, that's um, those are good recommendations. Also, dodge if you can get the most out of that dodge stat that she's above average in. Um, you'll benefit quite a bit from that. If you are using her to inflict damage and blight, maybe something to help her with ranged damage, like unerring, would, would help. But if you're just using either slingshot or diagnose, you don't need it. Like, you're not going to miss one damage on slingshot, and you won't do damage with diagnose, so... Other than that, um, trinkets to mention... I don't know how you take her on a mission at all and not bring, um... Oh, I don't have it on her, do I? It's <laughs> funny. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I'm not gonna look too hard. I'm not gonna... It's on somebody. I'm not gonna look too hard. Um, if you have the Ancestor Scroll, she's perfect for it. Um, and it's gonna add to her healing and her stress healing. Uh, in general, putting a dodge trinket on her is not going to be a bad call either. Um, unless you have a way to, like, guard her or protect her or your group is just good enough that she's not going to get hit very often. Um, of note, if you're going to use the stun ability, heavy ammunition, her custom trinket is actually really good for that. It's going to increase the slingshot damage and the stun skill chance at the cost of five dodge, though. That's the problem. Um, I'm currently using Honey Treatment. It's almost as good as Answers to Scroll, but it has some, uh, in my opinion, pretty hefty negatives. So I would like to use Answers to Scroll, but I'm not going to work too hard to find it. Other than that, I think it's time that I just jump right in and uh, show how she works. I've got a party here that hopefully not get their ass kicked. We'll see. I don't care about money right now. I didn't need those lot. I don't know why I brought those. Excise the fungal tumors, and the land may yet live. Well, we're gonna grab this. You have a decent light resistance, so there we go. Hey! That was easy. Mission complete. We're done. Let's get out of here. Just joke. So yeah, we're gonna go with the standard. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you three combats. She's not incredibly difficult to play. Um, it's really just a matter of what do you need that round. Um, oh, Vincent and fucking Zack look great up in the front there. going to stun little old you another one falls or kill you that's fine too well now I'm gonna stun you and I'm doing this because uh, he can reach those front two and I'm gonna try and prioritize kill that one not quite I think I can just um hew. oh that's unfortunate Okay, now we're starting to get some stress ramp going, so I think I know what my second turn's gonna be. It definitely pays when you're using the Mender to be, uh... keeping up with stress damage or HP damage as it comes in. Um, you'll notice, it, even if you have, like, two damage on everybody, it's still well worth using Invigorating Vapors. I think that's what it's called. I could be way wrong on that. Uh, I'm gonna use Vicious Charm, why not? Let's get two turns. Hey, leave my Snake Charmer alone. I've got a couple of guys with stress on them. Someone tells me my Mender is gonna be a little busy in the next few turns. 
obliterated. Eradicated. Oh, and the push didn't even trigger because I killed him. That's interesting. Back to the okay, pit. so he did not get to do the stress healing in this combat. Looks like it'll be next time. There's a map inside. Wow! Oh. <laughs> Hi guys. I didn't see you there. Until I did. That minus 10 dodge debuff on a stun skill is really fun, by the way. Uh, let's, let's get... The ground quakes. Confidence surges as the All enemy right. crumbles. And the easy answer here is What? What did you do that? I did that because uh, my snake charmer has an ability right now on him where I can hit that right back rank and do some damage, so means that Annihilate. That's an ability. Um I was mentioning before that if you uh, if you're concerned you might have a death if it's a difficult enough mission have something on your backliner other than the mender that they can use in the front rank so I'm definitely got Mamba Dance in case that way if let's say one of these two were to die and she slid forward into that front I could use his turn to move forward or her turn to move back and then I'll be kind of okay for that battle. A dodge. Thank god the corpse can't dodge. Destroy. Thank you for getting that right, developers. That was... it's beautiful. Okay, most of that stress damage has healed. So I'm gonna put cure, cure it on myself and just be fine with this. Hit Vincent. No. No. No, no, you will die. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Mambo dance. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. All right. There's two combats. She's not incredibly difficult. That other combat is quite a ways. Wait. I thought I had a map. Why weren't you on it? Am I bugging? Am I crazy right now? The stunnies. This trinket is so good because that 25% stun chance is hard to find on things. Five dodges, well worth it. Just saying. Let's see if I can. Decimated. That crit did it. I needed the crit that time. Okay. Well. There's a good chance I might need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need to chop to kill this guy. The, fiend falls, the hue wasn't gonna do it. Plus I crit. Blossoms. Oh, I keep forgetting I have a trinket that makes him inflict bleed. So it would have done it. God damn it. That's fine. That's fine. So now I don't have any stress again because these stuns are actually working out in my favor so far. So let's let that bleed kind of take its toll for a bit. I'll see if I can get I don't know if Wicked Slash can reach that far. It cannot. Sad day. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them. Well, I don't have the ability on my leper to get rid of corpses, so this is the best way. Aha! Get wrecked. Give them no quarter. Well, that is how to use the Mender. Um, again, thank you for uh, tuning in and watching this guide. Um, stay in tune <laughs> uh, this coming week. Uh, I've got another Let's Play on Wednesday, and then Stratterday uh, coming up again a week from today. If you have any suggestions for what classes I might cover, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Yeah, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.